Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma, Michael is the author of Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, the forgiveness doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. And the truth that is rooted I just love that song every time I hear it. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio. And this is day 23 of our memorial celebration. Our call in number is 646 200 4169. Michael. Welcome to Mind Shifter Radio. And we're here to support you in shifting your mind. And it's a delight and an honor to be able to. Uh, share with you the tools that we teach and the uh, the work that we've discovered coming out of the ancient Aramaic language. And our work is that of the ancient Aramaic idea of forgiveness. We live in a culture that teaches us that forgiveness is all about letting other people off the hook. So we hear people saying, I forgave them. Why is there still pain in my life? It's well, because... When you let somebody else off the hook for what's happening inside of you, you've done done nothing to address what's happening inside of you. And if you never address and remove what's happening inside of you, then you get to live the title of my book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? So uh, the subtitle of the book is and What You Can Do About It. So here's what you can do about it. You can learn the ancient Aramaic idea of forgiveness, and you can begin to apply that not to the people in your life, not to yourself. But if you have pain, you apply forgiveness to your pain. When you apply forgiveness to your pain, you remove the root and the source of your pain. And so we're here to, uh, to create a space where each individual realizes the power that they have to remove what does not belong in human experience, to remove what oftentimes has been purposely placed there in order to keep us in our fear and our hostility and therefore controllable. So what we're looking to do is to support every mind, heart, and being on planet Earth addressing every form of hostility and fear that they hold. And I promise you, if you don't hold hostility or fear, I don't care what happens in your world. You won't experience hostility or fear. And I promise you that if you hold hostility or fear, you will experience something or somebody that will bring it up for you. That's just the game of life. But the only experience of it's there, and as you start to remove it, you'll find that there's less and less and less of that experience. And what we're looking to do is to reduce it to zero on planet Earth, which, you know, everybody says, well, that's pretty utopian, Michael. You know, it's pretty silly. It's pretty stupid to try to do that. And, you know, they were telling me that 25 years ago. And now you watch and you see the movies that are coming out that are referring to or speaking specifically about the Aramaic, you see the people that are waking up and going, in fact, it's an awesome film that came out recently by the man who was a producer for Jim Carrey, made a fortune with Jim Carrey. And after having a uh, bicycle accident that left him with a close concussion syndrome, which he explains in his new movie entitled I Am, He uh, has such pain, and and the pain, he says, most people who have this post-concussion syndrome usually commit suicide because it's just so traumatic. There's no relief from the pain. Fortunately, this gentleman woke up one morning, and his post-concussion syndrome was gone. But he'd stared death in the face and went, what's really important in life? And, And he 
shares in the film that he realized that he and his profession were part of the problem on planet Earth, his movie-making profession. And so he decided to do something about it. He created a film called I Am. And he goes around the world and he interviews people about what's really going on here, what's human life really about. It's pretty awesome, pretty powerful. So we invite you to look up, support, and go see the film I Am. And, you know, he's, it's, it's, it's so powerful what he says. And, and to look at, actually at one point he defines insanity and his definition of insanity is done visually. And his definition of insanity is him sitting on his Mercedes with his Learjet and not living a human life. What is a human life? Everybody on the planet who's ever held a newborn knows exactly what human life is. It is the awesome, absolute presence of love. And the world, in order to get us to pursue things and be controllable, tends to help us to remove that human life by instilling hostility and fear. It kind of dumbs us down. You know, when we do an intense or, or a uh, why is this happening to me again workshop, Jeannie always opens the workshop. And the first thing that she does is she asks the question, or actually it's the second question that she asks, is how many have ever done something they regret? And then ask people to tap into what they were feeling when they did what they regretted. And 100% of the time and 100% of the places on the planet, the answer is always some variation on the theme of hostility and fear. I was feeling rage. I was feeling anger. I was feeling sadness. I was feeling grief. I was feeling greed. I was, whatever it was. And why do we do what we regret? Why are we in reduced intelligence while we're trying to achieve an awesome goal? Because somebody implanted hostility and fear in us whether it came from our genetics, our early childhood experiences, whatever it is. And the purpose of this work is to return people to full intelligence. And that full intelligence comes from a human life. And a human life is the active presence of love. So our purpose here is to support you in learning the tools. If, if you live in a world where in hostility and fear you lash out or you go into a corner and, and just torture yourself. You know, terrorism starts with him. If you terrorize yourself with your thoughts about how I should have and how I could have and how I shouldn't have and only I had. And there's a way to delete and to remove that pattern from your structure. It's called forgiveness. Forgiveness has nothing to do with letting other people off the hook. And so our goal is to restore human life to every mind on the planet, to every being on the planet. Our goal is to support each person living in their human lives the awesome active presence of love and the intelligence that accompanies it 24-7, 365. That's our purpose. And we're on day 22, Jeannie? 23. Day 23 of our celebration of Memorial Day. And our celebration of Memorial Day came down to, and we did a show, if you want to look at the archives, you can listen to our Memorial Day show. We had a couple of vets on talking about um, their experience and what was going on in their worlds. And we decided in that show that the best way to honor these people who've been forced to murder, who've been murdered, been maimed, injured, emotionally traumatized, brought those emotional traumas and those injuries home, traumatized the people around them. The great majority of vets uh, don't end up in the marriages that they were in when they left for the service, these loving, wonderful relationships, don't kind of pan out quite the same because of what's carried home. And so what our invitation is to you, and we're carrying on, we're going to carry this on every day, is an invitation to look at one thing in your life that's based in hostility or fear, and I'd offer that the things that we individually and collectively hold based in hostility or fear are the cause of war, the cause of reduced intelligence that leads us to think that by killing somebody else, we can get what we want or that things will get better. And so we're inviting you to celebrate for the 23rd day in a row, Memorial Day, really truly honoring these people who in many cases gave their lives and in many cases a lot more than just giving their lives. One of the vets that was on the show shared that when he was asked Several years ago, he was a Vietnam vet. 
And he was asked several years ago what was the biggest sacrifice he had to make. He did, I believe, two or three tours of duty, one a Purple Heart, one, I don't know how many different medals, but several. And he said the biggest sacrifice I had to make was to choose to take another human life. And, yes, people can be macho and tough and drug themselves and hide away the pain of that, but I'd offer that's the root of post-traumatic stress disorder, watching that happen. And if we individually and collectively will start to forgive and remove hostility and fear from our forms, we'll restore intelligence, we'll restore human life, and we will truly honor those by putting an end to the insanity called war. So we invite you to look at something in your life that you're willing to use the tools with. And if you're not familiar with the tools that we're talking about, they're available free on our website. You go to my website and download my book, Why Has This Happened to Me Again, free in English, German, Russian, Spanish, Farsi. We've got several other languages underway. You can order the book in Swedish, but the publisher wouldn't let us put it online free. We tried. He wouldn't let us. But if you go to the website, awesome site that Jeannie has created, on the right-hand side, you'll see a link that says Download Worksheets. Please, please, please click on that link. Download the latest chapter 24 from my book, which explains the forgiveness process. That's the first link. The second link is the worksheet process, how to, or the, or the actual worksheet itself. And then the third link, Jamie's just put a new third link up. And the third link is our radio show from back in February, where a young lady, a volunteer, uh, Pamela Anders, Pamela, uh, just chose or, or volunteered to be the, the guinea person to walk through the worksheet process. So there's, you can listen to the show and you can listen to us walk her through the seven-step reality management process. And reality management is about how the ancient Aramaic tool of forgiveness works. So we invite you to download that tool, put it to work in your life. Face one hostility, one fear that you have today. And, of course, we know that you're blaming somebody else for it, but we're going to invite you to notice that if you've been through that particular hostility or fear 87 different times with 42 different people, you're the only one that was there every time. It's about you. It's yours. And that just means that it's yours, nothing else. And so our invitation is that you forget. And, and, and it's such a difficult concept for people to get because we've been so brainwashed that we forgive others. We forgive ourselves. We're letting somebody off the hook. It's got nothing to do with forgiveness. It's how you go inside and collapse your pain. And all pain is absolutely optional. The only reason you'll ever experience it is because it's there. And when you decide to wake up, you'll change it. So that's our uh, our purpose for today. And we are delighted that you're here with us. And uh, we we invite you to join us in the project of celebrating Memorial Day for the 23rd day in a row by forgiving. And Ginny, you've got somebody on the phone with a call. Hi, this is Christina. How are you doing? Well, hey there, young lady. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from San Antonio, Texas. Awesome. Welcome to the show. How can we support you? Yes, thank you so much. Um, Well, my relationship is going really well with my new boyfriend. Um, He's getting a bit of that baby fever, um, and he set a date for us to get married. But I haven't received a ring yet. And I wanted to know if he just saying all this just to get, you know, me comfortable and for us to, you know, work at it, or is he really being serious? Well, you know, uh, Christine, you're the only one that's going to be able to make that determination. And, um, you know, there is another show on this network with um, uh, uh, some folks who do uh, kind of tapping in and do psychic type things, but that's not the, uh, if that's who you were thinking of uh, of getting in touch with, that's actually um, uh, Carol's show on Monday morning at 9 o'clock and Friday morning at 9 o'clock if you're looking for that, you know, psychic feedback. But what I'd I'd invite you to do, and that's Eastern time, of course, what I invite you to do is that uh, if you've got some concerns about it, you might take that worksheet process we were just describing, download it free from our website, and our website's www dot w-h-y again dot com and uh-huh. what you'll find is it will clear some spaces inside of you to 
to be more uh, able to create the kind of relationship that you really want to do. And we hold the space that this marriage that you're contemplating, if it's the right uh, move for you two to make, that you make it. And it produces for both of you the most awesome experience of life as relationships are designed to produce. And that right. if anything okay. less if anything less than love, any forms of hostility or fear come up from patterns that either of you bring to the relationship, please turn to the website, use the tools, and you'll find you can clear those things out. And what happens is everything that, you know, in the normal world looks like an obstacle in relationship, all of a sudden becomes a stepping stone to better relationship because you have the tools to heal those things that are inevitably going to come up in relationship. Right, right, absolutely, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank awesome. you so much. Well, blessings. Thank you for your call. All righty. Thanks. Jeannie, do we have any other callers or any uh, conversation going on in the chat room that would be good to address? By the way, our phone number, if you want to call in and you have a question or a thought, or especially if you're using the tools and you need some refinement or some support with it, that's what we're here for. And so the phone number is 646-200-4169. If you happen to be in the Medford, Oregon area, that's what we're, where we're speaking for the next two nights. Two nights, Tonight from 7 to 9.30 at Unity of Medford, we'll be doing a workshop called Communication. Did you hear what I think I said? It is one of the most powerful transformative tools on the planet in relationship and also in business settings. I, uh, I got a letter from a young lady up in the Northeast who had done one of our nine-day intensives at Hartley and and she had gone to a conference. She was into uh, to consulting with dental offices. And she'd gone to a dental conference. And the person who was running the conference, it was like, you know, a pretty hefty fee uh, weekend conference for dental consultants. And the guy who was running the conference threw her out of the conference because uh, he thought, apparently, that she was trying to steal his material. And... This guy had been a dental consultant. He was a dentist himself and, and had turned into a dental consultant. And he traveled all around the globe doing these high-priced workshops for people who were in the dental field. And she wrote him a letter based on our responsibility communication tools, owning what came up for her and what was going on and her responsibility involved. And one of the challenges when she was at the intensive that she was at was just some money issues. She was having problems with money and wondering how she was going to you know, put put her money act back together with the way the economy was at that time. And when she wrote this letter to this guy who had thrown her out of the conference without giving her her money back, the man the next week called her and said to her, that is the most powerful business communication I have ever heard. I want to spend some time with you. So here's a guy. Now, she's up in Boston who's doing this conference in Boston, throws her out. And about three weeks later, he was flying into New York. He did a stopover in Boston purposely to meet with her, set up to meet with her in the airport, and asked her, as a result of this single communication, if she would fly out. He was His officers were in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Asked if she would fly out and do a, a workshop, a program for his office staff. She did that. And she was offered a uh, a, uh, a job by him. Now, remember, money was her challenge. A job making more money than she ever imagined she could possibly make. Now, it turned out that living in Salt Lake City and doing what he wanted from her was not in line for her, was not in harmony with her purpose. But she had that offer. And, and then she said that about two weeks later, there was another similar type of conference that came through town that she registered for. And she's sitting in the audience and doesn't know the presenter from Adam's cat and vice versa. And in his opening remarks, he singles her out and asks who she is and, and says, I, need, I want to spend some time with you. So they had lunch. And the, the last afternoon of the workshop, he – and now here are all these dental offices in her area, and he – 
at the end of his conference in the afternoon, he says, now I know I'm supposed to do another presentation, but I have something much more important for you. And he put her on the platform to present what she's doing. This is all based on responsibility communication. On the platform, in front of all these local dentists, her money problem was solved. So when you take responsibility, when you move in the direction of owning what's going on inside of you instead of blaming everybody else, I don't care what the setting is, whether it's relationship, business, or whatever, it's awesome to see how it shifts things. So come and join us if you happen to be in the Medford, Oregon area tonight, 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night we're going to do a thing called Laws of Living, and they're both free open workshops, and we'd be delighted to have you with us. Jean? Any conversation happening? Anything I should know about the chat room or anybody on the phone? Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And that's awesome when you let what's in you get upset over this because that's when you can catch that thing and throw it out. That's when you can apply forgiveness. As Michael, long as it's hidden under this. Yes, sir. We could not hear Jeannie at all. Oh, Jeannie, you weren't in there. She was oh, way in the you, background. Tim. Couldn't hear her. Thank so you, we don't Dr. know how you, what, okay. what you're commenting on. Okay, well, if you'd go ahead again, Jeannie, and can you hear her now? Can you hear me? No, she's in the background. No, can't hear you. Uh, okay, just a little technical difficulty here. Thank you, Tim, for letting us know. Okay, so I'm sharing that. Can you hear now? No, no not there, Jeannie. We're, we're only hearing her through your phone, Michael. Yeah, here. Here, Jeannie. Okay, so Sam, who was in the chat room yesterday, she's not out there today, but she was sharing that she had been up till 5 o'clock in the morning working with a friend and processing her and everything and how much progress she had made just over the one day. And so she sent me an email uh, yesterday, and it says, before working last night and prior to watching Michael's video, her focus was on them, the people that she thought was causing her upset. She said, I just love this progress. And the quote that she sent me from her friend is, I'm letting what is in me get upset over this. So she's already shifted recognizing that it's within her that's getting upset, that it's not the people outside of her that's getting upset. So although Sam's not in the chat room today, um, I'll send her a link to this. And congratulations, Sam, for doing good work and for continuing to support us, and we support you. For those who don't know who Sam is, she is a support group leader uh, working with the uh, MindShifter support group in uh, Springfield, Missouri, not far from us, and is always there to assist and support people in the healing process. And uh, for those who don't know the voice that just came in and let us know that the sound was off, uh, that's Dr. Tim, who is the, uh, the facilitator of a support group in Crystal Lake. That's Michigan. correct just outside of Chicago. And uh, actually, Dr. Tim is going to be doing the show for us on Thursday. Uh, well, we're flying from uh, Medford, Oregon to Florida to keynote an alternative medical conference. So, Dr. Tim, we're delighted that you have the space, and, uh, and we sure do appreciate the support that you give us. You're welcome and deserving. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We had an awesome visit with Guy yesterday. It was fun. I did uh, leave you a message. But uh, Anyway, uh, Jeannie, any other thoughts in the chat room? Oh, David, welcome. Good morning, Hello. David. How are Hello. you, sir? Yes, sir, we're here. Can you hear me, David? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. You're loud and clear. How are things in Louisville? They're moving. 
it's uh, lots of lots of really neat things that are happening and challenging things as well. You know, uh, I see there's there's just this opening in this space for people to uh, that are taking note and being aware of being responsible in their life. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm at my son's work right now. I plan to breathe a couple of the people that are here and. Uh, not sure how it's how it's going to materialize here today and maybe uh, some tomorrow. So I realized what time it was, and I said, "Oh, I got to get on the on the call because I or the show because I wasn't on it yesterday. I was busy doing some work with uh, some other family members, and uh, it's going well. And it's a good visit. It's quick, and uh, it's going well. Well, fabulous. For those who don't know, David, David is the uh, Center Manager at Heartland. And he's on a little sabbatical uh, to attend a family wedding and spend some time with family in uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. So glad to have you on the show, David. And glad to have you on the team. Thank you. You are appreciated. Delighted. And so, Jenny, any other questions, thoughts in the, uh, in the website or in, in the chat room? Pardon me. Okay. Well, then, uh, Tim, David, do you have anything and what's happened with the show so far that uh, that you'd like to share? Well, I just got on, and so I'm not sure what it is that you guys have been talking about. Uh, okay. What what I've been talking about, uh, interesting enough, is to some of the folks here at my son's business, is uh, and inviting them to play in the participate in the forgiveness work towards uh, Memorial Day and doing some work along that. So uh, that's what uh, I've been viewing as, wow, how, what a tremendous difference it will be on, uh, on the planet in a year from now on Memorial Day as far as building up to that. I'm I'm getting it that there are more pe- more and more people that are conscious of the different acts and the different things that are happening and have really reached a point that, you know, there has to be some changes made with it. So it's nice to be able to uh, have some conversations along that line with folks that are like, yeah, you know, you're right, you're right. And as, uh, as I was talking with one of the partners in this business, and he said, well, you should go over there and teach those people in the other country. <laughs> Stuff came up pretty quick. And I said, yeah, and recognize that, that those people, from my experience, and I can talk from my experience of being in the war and being in combat and being on the front line and talking with the opposing side, the quote, unquote, enemy, that they were just like, me and every American soldier, that they were just doing what it is that their country told them was the right thing to do and what other countries were doing to them, and I know it was a lie, it's not true, and that those men and women that were out participating in that no more wanted to be involved in doing that than the man in the moon. They were just doing it out of patriotism quote, patriotism, unquote, or what's referred to as patriotism. And uh, so it was nice for me to have uh, some conversations and for to see the shift in the mindset. I think, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have anything to do because as soon as I explained it in that manner, then he said, yeah, he said, I, I, I can just imagine, yeah, that people, uh, that's not what people do. That's not their... True essence. They, they would never do it. They would never, never, ever do it. Very rarely. You know, and that's usually the dissociated mind that wants to come up and point out, oh, we have, well, there's this one person. What about this person that did that? And there are very few people that would do that. Uh, and they just wouldn't do it. You know, it's just not the true essence unless they're, they're pushed and trained and conditioned into doing it. Just would never do it. 
There's actually a, a, an awesome video that, um, to me, is very inspiring as to the possibilities. And uh, the, the video is called Joyous Noel, and it's a true story about uh, the battlefield happening on Christmas Eve in uh, two, uh, 1917 during the uh, First World War. And the Allies and the Germans are across the trench, you know, slaughtering each other the best they can. And um, there's a an opera singer who's German who is forced to the front lines. And uh, it's Christmas Eve, and so he sings a Christmas carol out over the battlefield. And uh, his awesome voice inspires the uh, the uh, enemy who responds. And you can actually go to our, our website, and Jeannie's got a link there with a piece of music called Christmas in the Trenches. And I'll never forget the first time I listened to that and heard the words from one of these battle-hardened uh, killers trained who says, on each end of the rifle, we're the same. And the ones who force us to go to war never show up. And so uh, it's, it's a powerful film that shows you what human life can do if, uh, if we are exposed to human life. And so the idea here is to be exposed to human life and to, uh, to actually live a true human life as we are here to do, to live our purpose, human beings. What are human beings? The active presence of love. And how do you get there? I mean, if we're, if we're locked in this game of, you know, family systems based in hostility, fear, rage, you know, brothers fighting brothers, sisters, you know, gossiping about brothers, about parents, and there's been all kinds of crazy stuff. How do you do that? Well, the first step is to remember that you came in the same as everybody else as the active presence of love. And life has ripped you off for that by instilling hostility and fear in you. And the alternative to that is to begin to remove those things that have been instilled. And as with the presence of love, you remove those things that have been instilled, all of a sudden, the game of fight and stress just doesn't have nearly as much uh, appeal because intelligence shows up. I mean, true human intelligence shows up. And that true human intelligence is made of the stuff called love. And the forgiveness tool is how to go in and remove those things from yourself that never belonged in your humanness. It is absolutely unnecessary and totally optional to live with any form of hostility or fear. Absolutely, totally, and completely optional. But, of course, if we don't know that, then we're stuck. We're stuck in a brainwash. We're stuck in a state that's not designed for humans. And we're looking to restore that human life. And we're here to support you in restoring that. And, of course, we teach best that which we most need to learn, and here we are learning it. And so it's a delight to be with you on the show. Gene, do we have any comments, questions, anything in the chat room to talk about? We're all set. If you'd like to give us a call, if you have a question for us, the number is 646-200-4169. And if you have a question, once you dial into that, then you hit the button. Hit one, and that will put you in the queue. So Jeannie will know that you want to talk to us. You want to say something. And so this summer we'll be uh, actually we're we're getting close to uh, to being back to Heartland. Uh, we'll be back there uh, over the uh, early part of July, and on July the 18th we'll begin our first residential intensive there at Heartland. Why is this happening to me? Again, will be the title of that intensive. And, We'll cover, actually, in a process-oriented format, a whole series we'll be doing. Why is this happening to me again? Healing through relationships, communication. Did you hear what I think I said? Purpose, personal power, and commitment, empowered to heal. Hands-on energy field work, mind shifters, still point breathing. There'll be a whole series of things that we'll do. And uh, if you if you want to take your work to the next level, uh, an intensive, it's just that. It's, it's an intense, process-oriented experience. We do this awesome gourmet vegetarian food, and uh, we actually have, you know, diet in the wool meat eaters who come to Heartland for an intensive and go, oh, my God, I'm not going to eat animals for the next nine days? Are you kidding? And 
many of them, when they leave, say, if I could eat like this all the time, I would become a vegetarian. So anyway, it's a, it's a highly detoxifying diet that supports the healing process, that opens things up and, and helps things to move. And so uh, if you're interested in doing that, you could look on our website, www.whyagain.com, and check out the dates for the intensives. And to start to uh, to look at this thing called a human life. And it's interesting, oftentimes people will stand back from a distance and watch someone who's lived a human life and admire them and actually want to worship them for having just lived as humans were designed to live. And because they don't have a direct experience of that, their their actual humanness was was knocked down so early in their lives that there's no conscious recall of it that they'll stand back and they'll speak about how that person lives and they'll speak about the love that person had and and they'll kind of have this blind fantasy that they wish they could do it, but of course, I'm only human. <laughs> well, when the world says I'm only human, what they're saying is, well, you know, I have all these foibles, I have hostility, fear, and, and that's just the way it is. No, that's not your humanness. That's your non-human nature. It's not necessary to have that. And a fantasy of love based on watching somebody who's admired, someone who actually had a human life, leaves us with the desire to be loved, but then what happens to how do you get there? How do you get to that point? Instead of going off in the tirade that's the family pattern of rage and fear, of condemnation, of pointing something at someone else that you don't deserve because when you point it at someone else, you're the one who gets the original. They just get the carbon copy. And so many people are trying to mimic the behavior of a human life without having the experience of a human life. If you look at the teachers who were teaching how to live a human life, they, they gave you a teaching in order to give you an experience of a human life so you could actually live one, not mimic one that you saw that maybe happened thousands of years ago. The idea isn't to mimic another human life. The idea is to claim your own, to have a direct experience. We'll see many people say, well, just give me a list of what I should do. And all the doing in the world, all the doing in the world that looks like it's loving doing, if there's no love present, is empty. The goal is to have that direct, full-blown, near-life experience. And... If your physiology, if your bloodline, if your culture is filled with hostility and fear, tough to have that experience. And so that's what the tools that were taught by those who had had the experience is all about. And those tools have been around for eons. And what we call the non-being world, the world of hostility and fear, wants to disappear those tools as fast as possible and keep everybody in the control game of hostility and fear because when we're there, we're just not very smart. And so our project in supporting you is not to say, well, here's how you live lovingly. You do this, 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 because that makes you a human doing. And that's what the non-being ones, mind wants. Is, well, just give me a list, then I'll fulfill the list. Then everything will be okay, right? No, you still won't have a human life. The first step is to have a direct experience in your physiology of the active presence of love. Did you know you're designed for that? You're designed to live there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, with the absolute active presence of love in you. Now, once you have that, then you're going to do those behaviors that are based in love. Nobody's going to have to give you a list. You'll simply come forward as a human life, and you will express an experience from that space of the absolute presence of love. And sadly, that's just about been blotted out of our culture. Words about a behavior, mimicking a behavior based in love, are not the experience that produced that behavior. It's just mimicking. And one who admires and tries to copy while having a dissociated mind of their own with hostility or fear in it is just kind of like this vain symbol playing out the content of its mind and its genetics. As you learn to function out of an actual human life, life becomes this awesome, delightful experience 
void of struggle, void of fear, and just here's how it's supposed to work, folks. And we've been ripped off for how it's supposed to work. And, you know, somebody can spend a whole lifetime struggling to live up to what, you know, that one who lived the life of love portrayed. One can talk about it, one can struggle to express it, but without the going back to the cause of it, and if you look at the teachings of the man named Yeshua in the original Aramaic language, the cause of a human life was a direct experience of the active presence of love. You can't get the cause of the human life from anybody but your own experience. And so we're looking to support you in having that experience. Does that bring any thoughts up for anybody? Call us. Oh, Jeannie, we've got a caller on the line. Awesome. No, you're not there, sweetie. Okay. Okay, area code 828, where are you calling from? Aha, uh-huh. I'm calling from Weaverville, North Carolina. This is Magda. Well, Magda, how are you, young lady? <laughs> Fantastic. Magda is a heart name. Say again? Say again? Oh, I didn't hear the last comment that you made. Oh, <laughs> No, I'm fantastic and so glad to finally get uh, to hear your radio show. And uh, Chuck is here right now, as a matter of fact. Oh, awesome. We're listening together. I have, left, I have left message after message after message for Chuck, and I would love to have a conversation with him, but he's a hard man to catch up with. He must be just all around the country and uh, doing who knows what. But Hey, Chuck. <laughs> Do you want me to hand the phone over to him? Sure, let's say hello, and, uh, you know, if, if, if after the show you give me a call on my cell, that would be cool to uh, to chat. That would be awesome. Very good. Before I do that, I want to just say to anyone in your audience that how grateful I am for your incredible, exquisite tools, because if it weren't for them and for you teaching those tools to us and how to use them, we would not be, probably would not be together right now, and we certainly would not have the depth of relationship that we do, and we use your tools every day. Thank you, Michael. Oh, well, you know, we are just so delighted to be on your team, and, you know, our purpose is to be on the support team of every mind, heart, and being on the planet, and uh, we're delighted to support you and uh for those who don't know, Mogs and Chuck have been Heartland regulars for several years now and uh, actually spent six months at Heartland oh, a year and a half ago. Uh, and uh, we're planning or hoping to see you this summer at Heartland. And, uh, we'll, we'll maybe get with Chuck after the show and chat a little bit about that. But good morning, Chuck. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, Michael. Um, how are you and Jeannie doing? We are awesome. We're out here in um, Oregon. Enjoying uh, cool to warm. Actually, it's supposed to go up into the 90s today. That's just started yesterday. So, uh, so we're uh, enjoying these beautiful clear blue skies and uh, clean air. It's, it's a pretty nice place to be right now. And we just uh, are finishing up a series. We've got two more workshops of. Uh, oh, gee, we've done 14 workshops in the last uh, 12 days. So, so we're just rocking and rolling here. Wonderful. <laughs> Excellent. Well, those are very lucky people who are getting to go to your workshop. And uh, I hope everyone who has a chance can can get over to these last couple that you're doing. They're yeah, remarkable. We had, an awesome, yeah, we had an awesome Saturday. We had 23 people at a uh, Mind Shifters and Still Point Breathing Workshop, and one young man who uh, has diabetes and uh, neuropathy um, showed up at our workshop on Monday night, last night, and uh shared that his neuropathy, which has been a long-standing problem as a result of diabetes, was gone, and uh, his blood sugar was normal uh, for the first time in years. So pretty cool to see the results when people start looking inside and taking care of themselves and healing. It's awesome. So, so uh, Chuck, Magda, do you guys have anything in particular, any questions about the work that we can clarify or any comments, anything to share? Well, I would just reiterate what what Martha just said to you, uh, I think we're both very grateful for what we have learned and what it's helped us with in our relationships. So 
um, I certainly encourage people to uh, to take a look at your work, which you're offering, and the tools. It's it's wonderful. Definitely, tra- what what we'd say is transformational. Yeah, that's absolutely. the idea. <laughs> yeah, information is not transformation. It's doing the work that is transformation. A lot of people are looking around with their mind saying, oh, give me some information. Give me some information. Then it will change my life. It's like, no, information doesn't lead to transformation. It's when you dig in and do the work, right? It's, it's, it's not always Dr. Feelgood, is it? That's true. That is absolutely true. We have an agreement that we will do our work even when we don't want to because when our issues come up, of course, that's exactly when we don't want to do it. And that's when we need to do it the most. And so we grab a worksheet and we do it, kind of gritting our teeth and end up in a very different place by the end of the, the worksheet. So, yeah, you got to do it. It doesn't help to just know about it or attend a nine-day intensive and then go, la, 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 I'm all fixed, because, of course, there's, there's still more to work on. Yeah, opening that uh, that veil, that barrier, and looking at those uh, genetic patterns. You know, there's a there's a part of us that says, well, let me just be nice and kind and say and do all the right things, and then everything will be okay. And if one doesn't actually do the work required to uh, to bring about the actual experience of the active presence of love, and you know, there's been a system in place for thousands of years for how to do that. Most people don't want to touch it because it means having to face and deal with what's inside of us. But once you recognize that you face and deal with what's in, deal with what's inside of you every day, it's just done unconsciously. <laughs> and uh, we pretend it's outside of us, but the truth is we're, we're playing it out every day. And this system for doing this was taught 2,000 years ago, and, and it consists mainly of forgiveness, and that is that you go into the space where what's inside, you change and you shift. We actually met a fellow yesterday named Guy Finley, who's a a teacher that uh, Dr. Tim introduced us to. He gave us a set of his tapes, and one of his stories really caught my attention. I thought it was really cool, and he talks about this fellow who goes on a trip, and he goes away for several months, and on his way out of town, he stops at his friend who's just starting a new business uh, making chairs making wooden chairs, and so he wishes him good luck, and off he goes. And he's gone for, uh, you know, six months. He comes back, and the first stop he makes is to his friend who uh, had gone into the chair business, and, and uh, his, his friend, uh, all of a sudden, he, he, you know, he drives into town, and he sees the sign over his friend's business, and his friend's business isn't ma- about making chairs anymore. It's about making wooden furniture. And... Uh, and he, and he stops to say hello to him. And he said, well, what, what happened? Did you just not have any customers for, for making those wood chairs you were going to make? And the guy says, well, he said, I, yeah, I did have some customers, but I just I discovered I just didn't have any skills for for, for woodworking. <laughs> and, uh, and the guy says, well, then why are you making wooden furniture? He says, well, I'm hoping it will be different this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing how many people, you know, they create a relationship. It goes all to hell in a handbasket. I mean, I thought this was a great story that guy shared. Uh, it goes to hell in a handbasket, and they go, well, I'm going to go out and, and create a different relationship. I hope it will be different this time. Yeah. It's true. It's, it's not going to be different <laughs> if you don't make it, if you don't change something inside of you. Or business, or, you know, it doesn't matter what venue it's in. Uh, If we're not willing to look inside and do the work required, it's not going to shift things. Yeah, exactly. Well, we are definitely hoping to uh, and planning to be at Heartland this summer for at least some of uh, your intensive work and looking forward to it very, very much. Awesome. Well, if you give me a shout on my cell after we finish the show, I'd love to chat with you. Super. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> okay, trust me. We love you. Thanks for the call. Jeannie, any other callers? Any Anything in the chat room? Anything happening? Several people out there, but they're all just being quiet. Okay, you got the technology handled. We're back on. You're back online. I can hear you loud and clear that time. Tim, do you have any thoughts? Anything to share with us? Well, I'm just glad to hear you um, integrating a story because I think that's 
that's what I got so much from listening to Guy's work is that it's the same work, but he has a slightly different spin on it. He tells stories to get the same points across. Right. And I remember you saying in your four-hour lecture of why is this happening to me again, the audio is all I ever had, but you say that when we're faced with learning a new or difficult concept, the more different ways we can get it into our system, the faster and the deeper we will integrate the material. And that's what I, think I, I love about how you and Guy are basically teaching the same truths. It's um, it's great fun, and it's very productive. Um, I also want to say that the tools for me have transformed my life, which was already a pretty good life, and, and many of the same types of ideals had been ex- I'd been exposed to them over the years, but your tools have accelerated the process in a way I, I hadn't imagined possible. And it gives me a higher quality of life and it just seems to keep increasing year by year that my personal interior quality of life is increasing by leaps and bounds. And that's hard to put into words to let other people know what that's like, but to to bullet point it, I spend less time in anger. I spend much less time in fear. I spend much less time wondering about what should I do in this situation, and I spend much less time in any kind of a confused state than I did prior to starting to use your tools. Awesome. Well, that's my experience precisely and precisely what motivates me to take this to people and to bring it forward. You know, there's the the whole set of tools, when, when you say my tools, I, I like to... Uh, to, to turn the real credit over where the credit belongs. And there's an ancient system of thought that speaks about the way most of us live. And it sounds like it's about something that happened thousands of years ago, but it really isn't. And that ancient system of thought was that most people live symbolically, what it was was referred to was in captivity in Egypt. Uh, and that captivity is the the desert. It, it, it's a place where one is locked into hostility and fear and controlled by that. And, and if you look at the ancient scriptural journey from the Aramaic perspective, that's what the whole thing is about. And so if we've been brought up in, in Egypt, in, in that uh, space of hostility and fear, then sooner or later, uh, rather than just effortlessly living out of the hostility or fear, we start to put effort into coming out of the desert. Now, that that whole journey, that, that symbolic journey of the Jews, you know, they come out of Egypt and now they spend 40 years in the desert. What does that mean? What What is 40 years? I mean, this should have been a two-week journey. Why do these people spend 40 years making a two-week journey? And it's it's not about a physical journey. It's not about what some people were doing thousands of years ago. It's each and every one of us, when we start to recognize that we've got to come out of this hostility and fear and start to develop a true human life, most people spend a lot of time to to do that. And what I've worked on for the last 40 years is decoding from the Aramaic the teachings that the man named Yeshua created. And he showed us precisely and exactly how to come out of it, how to come out of that hostility and fear world. Now, sadly, there are a lot of people who've taken the hostility and fear teachings and continued them as though he taught that stuff, which he did not. He always taught about the return to love. He always taught about the return to a human life. And so this coming out of Egypt and and then 40 years in the desert without tools, that's what it takes. But if you have the refined tools of that man named Yesha, you can just click through that stuff so fast. It's still an ongoing journey. You know, if you look at the disciples, they spent three years full-time with him. And what did they get accomplished? Just the very surface of their work. You know, when they were put to the test, each one of them did what? I mean, the guy who's considered to be the head of it all, he denied him and, and cursed him. I mean, actually cursed his teacher. 
Why? Because in three years, he hadn't worked through his hostility. So this is not a short-term program. You know, as Magda was just saying, they've been to Heartland several times, and they're heading back this year. It's not a short-term program, but here are these who spend three years full-time with the master, and all of them but one fail the test. When the stress is up and the chips are down, they all run away with Peter, you know, condemning and cursing him. If you look at Paul, you know, uh, he, he's, he's had the direct taste, the direct experience of love. That's what happened on the road to Damascus. It's called the mere life experience. He gets the experience of what the active presence of love feels like and, and is, that full-blown light experience. But that doesn't transform everything in him. And so you listen to him. And he says, why is it the things I would do, obviously inspired by love, he's done this awesome writing on love. Actually, if you look at his writing on love in Corinthians, you'll see where his issues are because he starts talking about love is patient, love is kind, and then he's got a whole list of things it doesn't do. By our words, you know, Shakespeare said, my words fly out, my thoughts remain below. By our words, we can tell exactly where our work is. And so you can see where Paul's work is by what he talks about not doing this, not doing that, not doing that, not doing that. And that's not to, uh, that's, I think that's to look at how our words reflect what's going on, because if we start to pay attention to our words, we can start to see where our blocks are and where our words come from, hostility or fear. There's our desert showing up. And so, you know, Paul admits himself that he wants to do this thing called love, but then he says, why is it? And, you know, he's in confusion. Why do I do the things I hate? Because he doesn't know how to forgive those things. He doesn't know how to get that part of the desert out of him. And it's, it's time for us to understand that whole teaching. And if you start to apply it, you move through, you know, the, the bulk of the desert pretty quickly, and there are always new layers to come up because literally what we're talking about doing is cleaning up your whole genetic bloodline. And we're here to support everybody in cleaning up your whole genetic bloodline in living 24-7, 365, the active presence of love. Many people hear about the inner work, and they're excited by it. They study it. They admire others who've done it but they haven't created the direct experience in their physiology of the active presence of love. So they love to talk about it. They love to use the words of the one who did it, but they either don't know how or they refuse to put their own hand to the plow. So they'll proclaim the greatness of the one who did it. They'll teach worship of that one, but always value the traditions that were born and bred in them of their generations. And that's that story of the the desert journey. What had to happen for people to get out of the desert was they said the old generation had to die off. That didn't mean everybody in old physical bodies had to physically die. The root of the word generation is genari. It means cause. All of the old causes that are held within ourselves that keep us in that hostility and fear are our own symbolic desert. And we have to remove, and that is that the tool for doing that is forgiveness. We have to forgive those causes in us, not forgive other people because those causes are in us. And that's what changes it and produces the result that you're describing, Tim. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an awesome uh, journey, and, and I'm so uh, delighted to be sharing the universe with you and the, uh, the teaching with you and the support that you're giving to people. Uh, your support groups, you know, every time I hear another report on the awesome things that are happening in the Mind Shifters groups, a group that you're doing up there, it's, uh, it's fabulous to, uh, to be a part of uh, of your life and be sharing the planet with you. Well, thank you. We're, uh, we're looking forward to starting the first half of your lecture, Empowered to Heal, tonight. Awesome. Well, that was our workshop last night, so cool. And uh, tomorrow we'll continue the conversation about how these generations impact us and just what that means and how the the tools of judgment, condemnation, war, and violence tend to keep us hypnotized and out of touch with the actual presence of love that we are. Tonight, communication, did you hear what I think I said? Powerful way to move those things out of the system and to get support for doing it. And as you do those tools, use those tools, you will create the best year yet of your eternal life and for everybody around you the same. Blessings.
Bring a stranger to the show. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.yagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com.